How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be looking at a Columbia CR30 and a Cub Cadet CC30. So let's get right into it. So I have a Cub Cadet CC30. This is a 30 inch mower with the engine in the back. You can see that I have a multimeter here. I also have a multimeter over here. My shop's kind of a mess right now. Wasn't planning on doing a video but I absolutely had to for this because what a poor, poor design by Cub Cadet. So my customer complained that when he would turn his key, you know, with the brake on and he's on the seat, that the engine wouldn't start. He thought it was a dead battery, but it's not. And we're gonna come over here just to the key switch. I do have the parking brake on, so you just have to push your foot on the brake and then you bring that lever all the way down. But now when we come over here with the throttle down, you're gonna see that she turns over every time. And it will start and run, but I don't wanna run it in the garage. So. What was the issue? Well, it was a safety switch. And wouldn't you know, the safety switch is fine, but it's just a poor design by Cub Cadet. And I'll show you why. So you're gonna notice here that it says no hands, spinning blades, right? Don't put your feet underneath this. So this here is your grass chute. It directs the grass outward. If you take this off, there's a large hole here, right, an opening, and your blade is visible. So if you remove this, there's actually a safety switch that Cub Cadet has put in here, okay, that's connected to the rest of the loom and that goes in. And if you remove this, your engine will not start. Well, guess what? This wasn't removed, so I didn't even think that was gonna be a possibility. And that's why I left it till last when maybe I should have tested it first because it was easily accessible. But the switch is fine, I did test it. So what's the issue? Well, check this out. I'm just gonna push my thumb down on here See all the play? So this plastic has kind of warped over time. And if this wing nut here rattles loose, which I just tightened it up, but watch what happens if this loosens off a little bit. Let's say you're cutting grass and you hit something and I want you to listen for the switch. I'm just gonna adjust my brightness here. Listen for the switch to disengage. See that? That was in that position when I got it. Imagine that, and I completely missed it. All it took was for this to rattle loose, and we can even tighten that back down to like right about there, and that'll still happen. So even if you were to hit something and the front comes up and it kicks the back end up, and it just pops that switch out, your machine, which I'm gonna show you right now, will not start. So the brake is still on, nothing. See that? So I thought 100% it's a bad safety switch somewhere, and honestly guys, like what a poor design because they could have made that much better. Because it's all plastic, you know, that can warp, and I don't think Cub Cadet thought about that, especially if these things sit in the sun all the time. And all it takes is for that just to press up there. And then what happens is once it gets into that position, it's gonna stay in that bent position, and the longer that plastic wants to stay in that bent position, it's gonna kinda remember that position. So when you try to bend that back down, which I'm gonna do here, right? Watch, I'm gonna let go of it, and you see how it wants to pop out? So it's been in that position for probably a couple weeks now, and my customer went after maybe waiting two weeks to cut his grass, and he went to start it, and it wouldn't start. So what I'm gonna do is most likely just take a self-tapping screw, because legally, I'm, I'm a business here, I cannot disconnect safety switches. I can't cut the loom and, and jump wires. I only jump safety switches for the purpose of diagnosing and testing, so that I can bypass a switch. So for something like a seat switch there, then I bypass the the wire, the connector, so that I don't have to test the switch, right? So if I put this back and then I go ahead and plug the seat switch in and it doesn't start, then I would know that I would have to have a look at the seat switch. But uh, going back to how I'm gonna fix this, I'm just gonna take a self-tapping screw and I'm just gonna push this down, right, so that it's flat, and I'm just gonna take a self-tapping screw and drill it in to the mower deck, and that'll solve that issue. For legal purposes, I can't go ahead and disconnect safety switches, but if this was your machine and you wanted to do it, you could go ahead with the old drill and cotter pin or safety pin. So what you do is you depress the switch, and then with it depressed, and you could remove that, take it to your workbench, depress the switch, drill a small thin hole through the switch and through the little uh, plunger there, that piece that comes out, and then put a cotter pin through it, 
and then that'll keep it in the downward position. Or you could go ahead and test your switch and figure out which side has continuity with that depressed. And then you go ahead and jump those wires or, you know, like I said, just cut it and then put a butt connector and connect them. And then you could simply bypass that entire switch and just disconnect it completely. Um, I think that would be the best way because you really don't need to have a safety switch there. I mean, as long as you guys know that your guard is in place and your blades aren't exposed, then you're not going to have a problem and you're not going to injure yourself. So if you have one of these Cub Cadet CC30 or if you have one of these Columbia CR30s, because they're essentially the same machine, they do have the same decks with the same deck switches, then that's something you want to check out. And on this one, I actually removed the deck because my customer blew a deck belt. So I have the mower deck from the Columbia CR30 here. You guys can see that it's absolutely identical. And if we notice here, see how that one's loose as well? So even though this one's loose, it just hasn't popped up yet because look what Columbia did. Ah, see, they put a little tab there and that is gonna prevent that from coming up more. So either the tab on the Cub Cadet broke off or they never ran one to begin with. And that is a design issue. So just to show you guys that there is no bracket on that one, you guys can see there's never been anything welded there. So we're gonna look at the model number here and you're gonna see that this is 03 2016. There's your model number right there. Now we come over to the Columbia and we're just gonna quickly look at the model number here and you guys are gonna know 03 2019. So sometime within that three year period, Cub Cadet or Columbia started having these issues and customers were complaining and they were taking it into the shop and they probably had maybe a few hundred of these cases. So they got smart and they just weld a little tab on there and that prevents that plastic chute from popping up and basically uh, opening up your kill switch there. But I guess if you had an older model, you could just go and weld a little tab there or like I'm gonna do, just a little self-tapping screw into the deck, it won't harm anything. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get that Cub Cadet fixed up Back to the customer, it starts now every time you turn the key because that little safety switch is now engaged all the time. Next week, I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video on the Columbia CR30. It was running rough, so we had to take care of that, get the deck reinstalled and also the deck belt. And then there was a couple other little things that I took care of as well. So stay tuned for that next week. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.